I sting myself on my hip, my elbow, on a finger, on my ankle, my forehead, on the tip of my nose. The most I've ever given myself was between 15 and 20 in my left hip. I really love stinging myself with bees. My name is Ayana. I am 54 years old, and I'm addicted to my nails. Last season, Miss Jazz may have had long fingernails. My nails, they are a girl best friend, very precious to the heart. But Jazz has nothing on me. I have long fingernails and toenails. They're just sexy and sassy. I am considered a long nail goddess. Ayana's addiction started with her fingernails when she was 24. But eventually, those weren't enough to satisfy her obsession. So five years ago, Ayana began growing her toenails. My toenails are my babies. If I break a toenail, it's like a limb missing. I will fiercely protect them at all costs. The toenails, ugh. That's not normal <laughs> to see it in society. The big toe is like four inches, and the little toes about almost two inches long. People are shocked when they see me, but I don't worry about them. I love it, and that's all that matters. But the extreme length of Ayana's toenails makes day-to-day -day activities close to impossible. I have to be very careful, no rushing, so I must walk like a little penguin on my heels. So when I go up the stairs, I have to walk sideways. I can't sleep too much on my back because of the color. It feels like a brick is sitting on top of my toenail. I can't run and play ball with my grandkids. When I'm dressing, it is a little challenging. I can't wear clothes and shoes. I can't wear socks. I have to wear my flip-flops year-round. I have tennis shoes that I wear, but I have to cut them out to wear them. And what I do is I take the scissors and I cut the toes out of them. See? But Ayana isn't the only person inconvenienced by her toenails. She's very demanding sometimes. Y'all come aside my foot. I help her um, open doors, walk downstairs. We become bodyguards all of a sudden. We gotta make sure they don't step on her toenails. Ayana gets a pedicure up to twice a week. One visit to the nail salon costs almost $100. And she doesn't let just anyone touch her precious babies. I only touch my toenails and my manicures touches my toenails. No one else touches them, no. Recently, Ayana's addiction also turned into a health hazard when she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It's always a concern for me because her nails do limit her in certain exercises that would definitely benefit her health when it comes to fighting diabetes. Not even diabetes can stop me from growing my toenails. They are 50% of who I am. I will absolutely not cut them. My name is Asha. I live in Claymont, Florida. I'm 47 years old, and I'm addicted to growing my 21 foot long hair. It's my baby, my sweetheart, my crown. It makes me feel unique, one of a kind, a living legend. I am the Black Rapunzel. Oh my goodness. When I first saw her hair, I was shocked how long it was. My second thought was, wow, she's got like a built-in broom. 47-year-old Asha has been growing her hair for 24 years. It started as a fashion choice when she was 23 but quickly turned into an addiction to growing the world's longest dreads. Now her long locks that she's named Cobra weigh over 10 pounds. Me and Mr. Cobra, we are like really best friends. I talk to him a lot, I stroke him a lot, and yeah, I do kiss him a lot too. It's Mr. Cobra. We do everything together. We go driving in the car, I just place him on the passenger seat and I buckle him up. 
Mr. Cooper really likes grocery shopping. He absolutely loves fruits and vegetables. Sometimes Mr. Cooper and I just love to sit back and relax. We cuddle each other and I can tell he likes that. But Asha isn't the only person who gives her hair constant attention. When a lot of people see such long hair, they want to talk to me, they want to take pictures. Are you kidding me? That's well, really all your hair. It is all my hair. I use the shampoo on every inch of my locks. I treat it like I'm hand washing clothes. Just fed the baby some nice shampoo. Asha's locks weigh about 25 pounds when wet. But that's not her only challenge. My hair definitely dominates everything in the way I live. Even a simple thing as, as getting dressed, that's very stressful. My sleeping situation is very tricky. I worry about rolling around and getting tangled. Even running everyday errands is difficult. I have to really tilt and hold him a little bit so that he doesn't like bump into anything or get hooked in anything on top of the door. But Asha's biggest fear is getting Cobra dirty. I will never ever drag Mr. Cobra outside on the streets or on the sidewalk. If any type of bugs or anything get into the locks, I would have to cut it off. So if there's ever an unguarded moment where he looks like he's gonna fall, I get panic attacks. I will feel the pressure on my neck, and sometimes I begin to get a little bit tired around the shoulder area. It is a little bit hard to cope with, and you know, it can hurt. With increasing headaches and back pain, Asha's friends are worried. She needs to cut her hair. I couldn't imagine having that much weight on my back, carrying that around every day. There would never be anything, medically or otherwise, that can come up between me and my locks. Bottom line, I am not cutting my hair. My name's Kimberly. I'm 26 years old. I live in a small town in Virginia with my parents. He wants to go get your kitties. And I'm addicted to laxatives. I take laxatives probably about 10 times a day or more. On average, I'll probably take about 150 a day. The most was probably around 250. They'll cause my stomach to make weird growling noises, and sometimes I'll have to immediately throw it back up. I'm about six foot tall and 105 to 108 pounds. After my first year of college, I'd put on the freshman 15. My roommate told me about the laxatives. The more I took, I felt like the better the result. So I just kept taking more and more. I've probably lost around 50 pounds. Honestly, I've never read the warnings because I don't want to know what it's doing to my body. I did have to go to the hospital in the middle of the night because I was throwing up blood. They pumped my stomach and told me I should probably quit taking them because I had bleeding ulcers. I probably thought about it for a day or so. My mom and pretty much everyone in the family tells me, you need to eat. I tell them that I'm trying to do something about it because I don't want them to know what's going on. She pushes me away if I say anything too much about her weight. You know, I just don't want her to take any type of diet pills or anything like that. I just really want to see Kim happy. I've almost completely isolated myself from everyone. I just want to be at home and take my laxatives and be near the bathroom. Well, when I first started taking the laxatives, it would make me extremely sick and I would have to spend more time in the bathroom. At this point, I have to take them to be regular. I wake up in the morning and normally I take around probably anywhere from 20 to 40. And I'll eat lunch, take some more laxatives. Gonna take 25 right now. I 
I go through about six boxes of the laxatives a day, so I have to stash them in different places. I have to use quite a few drawers. Sometimes I keep them behind my little clock. A few months ago, my mom found a couple boxes of empty laxatives and I had to lie to her. In addition to my addiction to laxatives, I also constantly wear waist trimmers. They're supposed to make your stomach sweat to lose inches. I normally wear at least five up to 10. I actually think she's too thin, but she's she feels better at this weight. I hope that she gets confidence in herself and wants to focus on more than just her body size. I feel like my addiction has taken control of my life. I wish I would have never started taking them. My name is Gloria. I'm 28 years old, and my addiction is bleach. I love bleach a lot. I ain't gonna say I love more than I love myself, but I do love bleach. <laughs> I don't consider myself a germaphobe. I'm not afraid of dirt. I'm not afraid of germs. I just like the feel of bleach. Every day, Gloria cleans her house top to bottom with bleach. She goes through more than 300 gallons every year. Bleach has ruined her clothes and damaged furniture but Gloria refuses to stop cleaning with it. And I go and I wipe like my tables down, my stairwell down with it, cleaning the bathroom with it, my toilets, my sink, the tub in the kitchen, I clean my stove with it, my countertop, the refrigerator. There's been times where I walked in the house and bleach, the bleach smell just slapped me in the face. <laughs> Gloria's addiction to bleach began seven years ago while she was pregnant with her third child. When I was pregnant, I used to take pieces of tissue and di dip them in bleach and take them like pills. But my nutritionist and doctor, they, they made me stop doing it. And, and I thought it was just because I was pregnant and it'll go away. But Gloria's bleach addiction didn't go away, and she's even taken it a step further. Every morning, Gloria now adds bleach to her bath water. Every time I take a shower and or a bath, I have to use bleach. I have to use it. I first run the water, then I take the bleach and I pour it in a tub. It's not a certain amount that I use, I just pour until I feel like it's enough. When I stay too long, my eyes have burned and my skin have tingled, so that lets me know that it's time to get out. Over the last few years, she started to use a whole lot more bleach than what she was using when I first met her. If she runs out of bleach, she's gonna go get some that same day. Sometimes when I go to the grocery store, I will open up a bottle and walk around smelling it. When I'm going out and I can't be around bleach, I'll take it and I'll pour some on the top part of my hand so I can be able to smell it, like when I'm out. When you pour bleach on your hand, it just get a, like a warm sensation on it, but it never burns me. As far as my kids um, being around bleach, I don't think that I'm exposing them to anything. So I'm not really, you know, concerned about them getting into it or don't be unlike me. It has burnt my eyes and it has burnt my face. The pain was horrible. It felt like you getting cut and somebody pouring some straight alcohol on your cut. They burn it. But sometimes it will burn, like if I'm in like the bathroom up here and it's not real, real ventilated, it'll burn some. And as you see my eyes, they are red. You know, I'm human, so. <laughs> It'll burn a bit. I don't even know half of the issues that she could have from using the bleach. I just don't want her to get too carried away with it and end up being in a situation that she could have prevented from using it. The only way I stop using bleach is if God himself comes down and say, Gloria, you need to stop using bleach. Other than that, I will never stop using it until the day I actually die. My name is Shayla, I'm 32 years old, and I'm addicted to my breath. You're just perfect, beautiful, gorgeous. It just completes me. 
Shayla has spent nearly a quarter of a million dollars on 22 surgeries to achieve her 38 triple K breasts. She's even had ribs removed to fit her 14 pound implants on her size zero frame. My breast is like my babies. I love them just like they are my kids. Having these is just the most good thing in my life. I don't know why she just keeps getting them bigger and bigger. I don't know what she's thinking. When I go out, everybody turn their head. Some people are really nasty. The woman always jealous because the husband can't keep the eyes off my breast. But negative reactions aren't the only problem Shayla's triple K's create. When you have large breasts like me, there's a lot of things that you cannot do. I can't run. It's gonna be bouncing. When I eat, food always falls in my chest. Clothes, it's very hard to find clothes for me. And I can't tie my own shoes. Sometimes my daughter wanna come and hug me. But I can't really, you know, hug her in the front like normal mother does. It's frustrating. But anything for beauty. Shayla's had 13 years to adjust to life with large breasts. She got her first set of implants at the age of 19. My natural size was this, a little bit cut. And then I jump for the D cup. And then every six months I go in and say, that's not big enough, I need bigger. 13 years and 22 surgery later, I am a triple K. I'm having a lot of back pain. And my breast, I have this kind of soreness, like, you know, like burn sensation. In 2009, Shayla contracted a near fatal infection in her breast and needed emergency surgery to save her life. I was having like 105 degrees fever. I never felt that scared. Despite the near death experience, Shayla's thinking about going even larger, and her friends and family are deeply concerned. My husband doesn't want me to get any more breast surgery. And then I say, we can divorce, you know, we don't need to be together. No one can make me happy as much as my breast can. Shayla having these surgeries done is costing her her life, and it doesn't seem to bother her. I'm not afraid to risk my life to get what I want. If I die with my breast, I know I will die happy. My name is Margaret, and I'm 53 years old. I live in Morning View, Kentucky, and I'm addicted to stinging myself with bees. I sting myself on my hip, my elbow, on a finger, my ankle, my forehead, on the tip of my nose. The most I've ever given myself was between 15 and 20 in my left hip. I really love stinging myself with bees. Margaret has been addicted to bee stings for the past 10 years. Okay. Her addiction started innocently as a way to relieve her arthritis. In search of relief from the pain, Margaret turned to the beehives in her backyard. I had read how people have been using it to relieve certain pain symptoms. The first time that I stung myself, it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would. And it just got easier every time. <sighs> But what started as an occasional prick of pain for medical reasons has spiraled into 15 stings a day. There's a couple trigger points right here that I like to sting. Kind of put a little dent in it with my fingernail. I gently tap it on the abdomen and it comes away like that. She's always had kind of a taste for looking at the odd side of things. At this point now, with 15 stings a day, that's when I'm starting to get really concerned about this. It doesn't take very long for it to turn into that peppery burn, and it actually feels good. There's a little bit of swelling. There's a little bit of itching. 
but there's good stuff happening. Jeez, oh, Pete, honey, look at this thing. Yeah, you can see it twitching. Yep. Margaret's so hooked on stinging herself with bees, she has hives in her backyard that keep her stocked at all times. I hear a hum. She even uses a bee vacuum to make the chase easier. When I open this little revolving door here, they can go in, but they can't go out. And Margaret never leaves home without a supply. I carry honeybees around with me in my purse just in case I need a sting throughout the day. <sighs> but every time Margaret stings herself, the honeybee dies. Something Margaret is all too aware of. Every bee is precious. I get sad when I watch them die. I prefer to get an older bee. The younger bees, they've got their lives ahead of them. And it helps me feel less guilt about killing the bees. 